Hey everyone, how's your day going? Now, if you saw the last episode of Kenobi, so there are spoilers in here, so maybe turn away. Now, in the Obi-Wan show, episode 4 showed us Obi-Wan going into a restricted section of the Empire. In there, we got to see a lot of frozen Jedi from the prequel trilogy, from the time before the Empire was really a thing, when the Republic was thriving. Now, the first Jedi, or first being, that we see is actually Master Terra Sinube. Terra Sinube was born hundreds of years ago in the galaxy's deep core, on a world called Kosia. In close proximity to the ancient home of the very first Jedi, the planet of Titan, Kosia shared many traits with that neighbor, including its fairly quick progression into an interstellar power. Before Sinube was sent to Coruscant to train within the Jedi Temple, he was raised by his family in the forests and hills of the worlds alongside his fellow Kosians. Like the Wookiees of Kashyyyk, who constructed their villages within the towering Roshir trees, Sinube and his kind inhabited the Kosa trees. Unlike the Roshir trees of the Wookiees, which were covered in broad leaves, the Kosa trees were comprised of hundred-foot-long palms under which the Kosians thrived. If you were to take one look at Master Sinube during his most famous campaigns as an investigator during the Clone Wars, you'll see all the familiar traits of the Kosians. With green or blue skin and long slender necks, the Kosians made up another distinct species within the reptilian class, although later scientists would categorize them as reptomammals alongside the white-furred tauntauns of Hoth and the Verks of Sembia. Kosians walked on two feet and only had four digits on their hands and feet. They also had a long, scale-covered tail with a ball of fur at the very end. To other humans within the sector, the Kosians looked like magical creatures, and even rivaled Yoda's species in mystery. The Kosians regularly dressed themselves in rustic clothes, brown leather tunics, and coarse canvas pants. This combined with their peaceful, agrarian life made Kosians the envy of other species within the core. Now we can't be too sure how long they typically lived, because there aren't that many that pop up in the galactic records. Thanks to Master Sinube's illustrious career as a Jedi, we know that they could live over 200 years old. After all, by the time Terra had arrived on Coruscant and completed his training as a Jedi Knight, he was already a few decades old. And sometime before the year 231, before the Battle of Yavin, Terra was already a Jedi Master, indicating that he had studied the Force at the Temple for some time. Terra died sometime between the fall of the Republic in 19 BBY and the kidnapping of Princess Leia a few years later. So he certainly lived to be a well over 200 years in age. But when we look back at Terra's life and what he achieved in the Jedi Order, we find something quite interesting. Unlike other Jedi, like Grandmaster Yoda, who used their long lifespans to push their mastery of lightsaber combat and raw force skills to the limit, Master Sunube seemed to focus on something else force empathy. In his early life, he didn't achieve any great feats with this skill. The first time Master Sinube showed up in the galactic records was in the aftermath of the Great Hyperspace Disaster in 232 BBY. At that time, a massive transport ship called the Legacy Run was destroyed by a group of interstellar pirates, and the resulting debris field devastated countless worlds. Those same pirates tried to lay siege on Cyclor a strategically important shipyard world and the home of future resistant fighters, Vazet Dipters and Wizich Motzer. But the Jedi wouldn't let the planet go without a fight. Stellan Gios, one of the greatest lightsaber duelists of the time, hastily reached out to Master Sinube, who was stationed nearby in an outpost on Dera. Not quite large enough to be considered a proper temple, the facility on Dera housed a number of Jedi Knights, who could be dispatched through the sector just like the one on the Outer Rim worlds of temples where Luke Skywalker would eventually discover his new lightsaber, and the ghost of the Grand Inquisitor. Sinube's outpost on Dera was modest, well to put it lightly. But even without a vast army at his command, Terra knew the dire situation that Stellan was in. So he wasted no time in sending out a party of knights to assist in repelling the Nile marauders. From that incident in the year 231 BBY until the year of the Naboo blockade, Master Sinube passed into obscurity. Although he continued to be an important part of the Jedi Order, the period in which he lived was fairly uneventful, which explains why there aren't many stories of him. Eventually, with the death of Darth Plagueis and the rise of Senator Palpatine through the political ranks, Master Sinube reappeared. By the year 32 BBY, the Master Jedi was over 200 years old and was showing every sign of his age. 
Although the Kosians were remarkably long-lived, they didn't live as long as other creatures in the galaxy, like the Huts or Yoda's mysterious species, which I'm hoping we're going to learn about in The Mandalorian Season 3 with Grogu. By this point, Master Sunube was elderly, and he required a special crafted lightsaber cane to support himself as he walked throughout the temple on Coruscant. Although he was older and physically weaker, Sunube's mind was as sharp as ever. As we mentioned earlier, Terra might not have become the greatest duelist in the Jedi Order, or even the most powerful practitioner of telekinesis, but he developed a remarkable skill with force empathy. And that skill came in handy when he investigated crimes all over the surface of Coruscant, where he spent decades aiding the local police force and senate guards as a detective. During those years, Sunube had a chance to bump shoulders with some of his more famous peers and students, like Count Dooku, sifo Dyas, Seer Junda, and Grandmaster Yoda. But while those figures went on to have prominent roles in the Clone Wars, Sunube was content to stay on Coruscant and keep the streets safe. So sometime after 22 BBY, during the height of the Clone Wars, and remember, BBY essentially just means before Episode 4, Master Sunube would have to put those skills to use once again, when he helped Anakin Skywalker's apprentice, Ahsoka Tano, hunt down the thieves who stole her lightsaber. Partially due to his age and partially due to his own mastery of the Force, Master Sunube was forced to teach Ahsoka how to calm herself and avoid impatience during a conflict. At several times throughout their investigation, Ahsoka seemed to mirror her own master, Jedi Knight Anakin Skywalker, who regularly ignored Obi-Wan Kenobi and jumped into battles head first. And every time Ahsoka disregarded Master Sunube, she paid a price. In the end, it was Terra's own slow, prodding, investigative style, combined with his mastery of Force Empathy, that allowed him to apprehend the thief who possessed Tano's blade. And not too long after, he was once again drawn into a conflict where he was forced to protect a small group of Jedi younglings as Anakin fought against Barriss Afi in the Jedi Temple on Coruscant. By the time Emperor Palpatine executed Order 66 and purged the galaxy of the Jedi menace, Master Terra Sanube was well over 200 years old. Armed with his deft skill in Force Empathy, he, more than any other Jedi, seemed like the one who could escape the Imperial patrols and the terror of the Inquisitors. But when exiled Jedi Master Obi-Wan came to the Inquisitor's world of Nur, he discovered the body of Terra Sinube within an amber tomb. Although Kenobi couldn't confirm whether it was Sinube or not, the sight of the Kosian's reptilian face was far too familiar to be anyone else, so I really do think it was him. Now since Master Sinube rarely left the streets of Coruscant, he was probably apprehended while within the Jedi Temple. Or, if he managed to escape into the alleys outside, the Imperial patrols probably located him in a failed escape attempt. When we look at Terra Sanube's ultimate legacy, we will find a Jedi Master who took one of the lesser known paths within the temple. The history books of the Jedi Order are filled with tales of knights and masters who excelled at lightsaber combat. And even amongst themselves, the Jedi often liked to compare their skills with weapons and the Force in sparring contests. After all, if you just take a look at some of the most famous heroes of the Clone Wars, you'll see it's true. One of the reasons that Obi-Wan Kenobi rose to become the greatest Form 3 practitioner in the temple was due to his constant practice sessions with his apprentice, Anakin Skywalker. And of course his training before that with Qui-Gon Jinn, his master. Even Grandmaster Yoda, who liked to spend his time contemplating the spiritual and philosophical aspects of the Force, regularly exercised his dueling and telekinetic abilities as well. But Sinube was different. Like the great Grand Master of the Sith War era, Nomi Sunrider, Terra Sinube focused on a more delicate Force skill, one that ultimately led him to becoming an accomplished investigator on Coruscant for decades. So, if Sinube's ultimate fate was death at the hands of the Inquisitors, what implications does this have for the galaxy? Will his body and perhaps spirit offer Obi-Wan Kenobi clues into further mysteries of the Force? Or is he able to be revived? It seems there are buttons on the wall that either notify his life support system or maybe you can just defrost him somehow. Now although Qui-Gon Jinn was supposed to be one of the only Jedi to have achieved the ability to retain consciousness after death, Master Sunube would be another obvious candidate as well. So could he somehow talk to Kenobi? Or was his corpse simply meant to show us the depths of the Purge and how horrifyingly thorough the Inquisitors were when they hunted down runaway Jedi? Maybe these are just trophies that Palpatine has in the Inquisitor's headquarters. 
but I truly think there is something far more sinister with all of them there, and hopefully soon we will reveal the plot behind all of this. That is Master Terra Sanube and his life story in a bit of a nutshell. So I thought it was pretty cool that they actually had him in there. Some of the other Jedi I couldn't really identify, but if you guys could, then let me know in the comments below. And I'd love to do some research and make a video about them too. Anyways, thanks for watching today's video. I'll catch you all in the next one. Until then, remember, my fellow Jedi and Sith friends, the Force will be with you. Always.